bicarbonyl bar with a man going forth to work on this linear curriculum, Lieutenant Kristen Muller Jr. So, Dr. Brooks will be doing an introduction about the topics for today, um, and I will let him start us off. Good morning. Can everyone hear me okay? Good. All right, so today we're going to be talking about military readiness curriculum. This is going to be a four-part series. Um, this is just an introduction today, and we're going to kind of talk about where we're headed, where we're going. But myself and Dr. Nimchek will be presenting the Army side, and Dr. Wahlberg Painter will be presenting the Navy side. It's intended to be a two-hour series. It'll be about 50 minutes, 10-minute break, and then another 50 minutes or so. So now here's the outline. So introduction for the year, resources to access these systems, Introduction to the e-profile system, how to find and navigate the Army e-profile system, introduction to the 3822, how to write a 3822, and then questions. So this first half of the lecture is going to be kind of talking about the e-profile system and 3822, and loosely this will be the, the goal timeline that we follow. Um, if you have a, a, like immediate questions, obviously feel free to ask them, but um, we will have a time reserved for questions at the end too that will hopefully uh, give you some more time. We also will have limb do and light duty. And then at the very end of the Navy half, we will then have a survey kind of to check like a pre and post knowledge check. So what's this all for? So there are four domains of military curriculum. There are officership, operational, clinical, and administrative. All of these are important and necessary and part of your training. But this primarily today is focusing on kind of in this clinical, the medical boards, admin SEPs. And these are like military specific things that we have to learn that obviously our civilian counterparts don't. Um, but are important to make sure that we're competent physicians when we finish residency. So kind of where we're at, where we're going. So this was actually started about two years ago. Um, we realized we didn't necessarily have a formal curriculum here. And while some of the other residency programs are more closely attached to active duty units, here at Walter Reed, obviously we don't quite have that. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't missing out on some of these operational aspects. So uh, doctors McElroy and Cedarbird, a few years ago with their QI project kind of started this. And the goal was to make an assessment, give it, analyze the results and modify appropriately. So we simply didn't have much of a curriculum a couple of years ago. We've now put one in. Last year was part one and this is part two. So kind of a plan, do, study, act. Our goal is to keep changing it and improving every year. But the plan is from moving forward four um, didactic sessions a year. So one per quarter that will cover some of these topics. So here's where we are right now. We'll do a pre and post survey at the end, kind of talk about where you were, where you're going, then October, then January, and then April. And kind of what we're doing for each of these. So today we're doing e-profile, 3822, limb do and light duty chits. And again, obviously you can only learn so much in two hours, but we want to at least show some resources and kind of give an opening. Um, then next, review of Q1, we're adult learners. So space repetition is key. And then medical boards. Q3 will be a review of Q1 and Q2, as well as administrative separations. And then Q4 is the operational psychiatry simulation. I know some of you that participated in that last year, as so Dr. Ma created that. And it's a hands-on way to demonstrate proficiency. Mm -hmm. The goal is we'll do feedback and each day we'll do, each time we're here, we'll do a pre and post survey. And our goal is about a 20% improvement each time. We have what we call like the summer's out, school's out effect. And so we know you'll probably lose about 10% each time in between. But our goal would be by the end of the year, about a 40% increase from baseline to where we were, which we'll measure by the surveys. Here is the first thing we wanted to show um, is where do you get resources after this? So this is only intended to be a two hour topic and obviously this is not going to cover everything that you need to know but where can you go next if you want to see more so we actually pulled up here so under the ncc psych website there is a tab marked military up here if you go to the top resources military readiness so if you look at this military readiness this was dr trans um qipi project last year so that was um dr walford painter dr gutierrez dr quinn um, Dr. DeFrancesco, myself, and Dr. White worked on creating this, and it kind of allows you to have a quick resource. So for Army, E-Profile, MEB, Admin Set, Navy, same thing, Limb Do, Light Duty, MEB, Ad Set. And it's sort of an FAQ style. So if you have questions like, where do the guidelines come from? And they also have tabs. You can just go and it'll have where exactly where that would be. Okay, so this will be super useful, um, particularly like for our interns and people who are just starting out, but other people who might not realize that this is available on the website. Um, I frequently reference this when I'm looking for how to do this. So that's that's kind of one thing is just kind of showing you where this resource is. Hey, real, real quick, uh, Matt, can you uh, share the slides with the Okay. 
Okay, so we kind of talked about where the resources are, where we can find them, and let's now kind of start talking about the e-profile. So like humans, there are three universal questions to ask about the e-profile system. What is it, where did it come from, and what is its purpose? I wasn't sure if they'd let me put in the old draft.
I think you put like a time period on it, you feel like, you know, for the next 30 days or the next 60 or 90 days, recommend no night shift so that service member can attend the point or something like that. But again, it's a recommendation, and so it would need to be kind of like for a set period of time. If your job is a job that's only available during the night, well, then maybe we need to think about a more permanent profile if they can't perform their duty anymore. Okay, so how do I log on to the eProfile website? So there's two ways. You can log in directly using this link here, or you can log in via Alta. So when you go to Alta, you, you have to click a specific patient. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be that patient. You can literally search for yourself, but this won't populate on the side until you've at least pulled up a patient. And then on the side, there'll be army readiness. I'm going to show you pictures, screenshots of this in a second, eProfile. So perfect example. So we picked a patient, Dr. Cedarbird donated this from before. So he picked himself. Um, and then after that, it populates this tab here, army readiness There's a plus minus sign. Then you can click on eProfile. If you do not click on any patient, this tab will not be available. Then this is kind of like loosely what it looks like. So this would be, you would see here what it, the behavioral health, and right now this person's not able to deploy. They have various health conditions already signed. This person even has some permanent profiles. But you go to this arrow here, the add condition, type in, it's actually a very simple process. You can type in anxiety, you can search for a template, you can search for a condition, um, and it'll frequently auto-populate for you. And then this is what it looks like. So there's functional activities, there's physical readiness, physical fitness, all these kind of things. But essentially, this is the top, the bottom left here is what I was saying, the generic blurb. Um, it'll kind of automatically fill in for you. And then it'll ask you here, physical readiness. There shouldn't be anything from a behavioral health standpoint. If they need a physical profile, that should be their primary care. So we shouldn't be changing things that saying that they can't do two mile run or anything else like that. They need to see their PCM if they need a physical profile. We're just doing behavioral health profiles. If you're med psych, obviously that's a different story, but for psychiatry providers alone, you should be only filling out. So all of these, they should, yes, yes, yes. They should, you shouldn't change anything related to their physical profile. You're only doing the behavioral health aspect. Then all you have to do is you select route. You, you can search provider, but if it's a temporary, you don't need a second provider and you hit save and submit and it will be submitted. And essentially that's it. So um, we're gonna show a brief video from Dr. Amin about the e-profile system. We did in 3822s, and then we'll have time for more questions at the end. Here, I'll put it on for you. Sure, you're right here.
doing that. So for the next part of the Army side of things, I'll be talking about the use of DA Form 3822. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the naming scheme, um, at what instances do we use this form, and then I'll pull up a little example that was derived from the Sim Center experience last year. Um, before I kind of get into that, I want to emphasize that if you're sitting in this room and do not have access to the eProfile system or the MD system, um, that should be your homework assignment once you leave here. Uh, I remember sitting um, in the audience thinking to myself, you know, I'll deal with this when the time arises. And really, I kind of came later on to conceptualize these as tools to help our patients. Um, and there are many times over the last couple of years that I think maybe it would have been really beneficial to help the person in front of me. Um, and maybe I should have access earlier. Uh, so that's really one of the big takeaways from today is make sure you do not have access yet to get access to these systems afterwards. Um, okay, so 3822. Uh, what is this weird combination of letters and numbers? In all military branches, um, they love different combinations of letters and numbers, and I always find that really confusing. So a little bit of history there. DA stands for Department of the Army. There are a ton of these different forms that they publish. Uh, last I checked, was a couple of days ago.
go. Yeah, so number one, um, anytime there's a concern for harm to self, if the provider believes there's a serious risk of self-harm by the service member, either as a result of the condition itself or the medical treatment of the condition, you need to be using this form. What's the corollary of risk of harm to self? Harm to others, so that's number two. If you have a concern that there's a risk of harm to others, um, as a result of the condition itself or medical treatment of the condition, you need to be using this form to disclose that to command. Number three, harm to mission. Um, again, if you think there's a risk of harm to mission based on the condition itself or the treatment thereof, um, if there are disorders that significantly impact impulsivity, insight, reliability, and judgment, you're supposed to be using this form. And the other six are not as intuitive, so we'll kind of go through those. Um, the Special Personnel Program is a program designed to give only the most trustworthy individuals access to nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons. So if you have a certain number of that program threshold, um, it's a little bit lower for using this one to communicate to command, but there might be a risk because there's national security concerns in that program, obviously. Number five, inpatient care. So I think the Seven West Unit has been getting a lot better at this, but anytime you have an Army service member in particular who's inpatient hospitalized, you need to use this form um, at the time of discharge and give it to the command. Usually you can kind of print out a couple copies, give one to nursing staff, one to command, and sometimes you give one to the patient. Number six. Um, the next couple kind of get into these broad drug nets, catch-alls. Uh, number six is acute medical conditions interfering with duty. So if the service member is experiencing an acute medical health, mental health condition, or is engaged in an acute medical treatment regimen that impairs the service member's ability to perform assigned duties, again, that's very broad um, and open to interpretation, but that's number six. Number seven, substance abuse treatment program. So the service member has entered into or is being discharged from a formal outpatient or inpatient treatment program. Persistent with that instruction, um, you need to be using this form. Two more. Command directed mental health evaluation. These are gonna be big, especially during the third year. Um, the commander can order their service member, say, if you're concerned about you going for a mental health eval, um, this is the form that you can then give back to the commander. And the last one is pretty cool because, um, again, a broad kind of dragnet, uh, all other kind of things apply. Other special circumstances. Um, it's based on other special circumstances in which proper execution of the military mission outweighs the interest served by avoiding notification. This one only applies if you're in 06 or above. I didn't really realize this, but you get special power, I guess, if you come up to the 06 level. Okay, so language regarding these disclosures. A and B up here are also part of the document outlining those nine. A says basically, if those nine don't apply, you aren't required to use the form. But B is interesting. B says healthcare providers shall notify the commander when any of those nine apply. The words are shall notify, not thou may notify, thou can notify, shall notify. So there's a responsibility here that all of us have. I wasn't aware of um, to notify command if any of those non individuals that time possible. It's good to know. Now, what should we be disclosing on the 3822 form? I mean, it's broken down pretty simplistically, so it's kind of, uh, you know, you can read it and fill it out appropriately. But there is um, some discretion that they afford us. And the general rule of thumb is you should be disclosing the minimum amount of information to satisfy the purpose of the disclosure. And in general, as they keep in mind, that generally includes diagnosis, prognosis. And then point two here is really important also, how can the command help support or assist the service member's treatment? Sometimes we'll say during command calls, like, we should really kind of facilitate this member being able to go to that patient to get the hospital discharge. Um, and that's really, I think, important for command to hear. Um, part D here, we're supposed to be maintaining records of these disclosures. I don't know how well we do that, but um, I guess I'd always say it's my day theory from the computer. In theory, maybe that should be more formalized, but that is part of the regulation. 
Okay, so this is actually the
I did desperately put him on profile for that, but I did need to talk to command and they requested the 3822 so they had something in their record that we had the discussion. Um, but based on the situation, the profile wasn't really necessary for his care. So I think each one is going to be a situation by situation. And always, I would say just be open to your command because some commands may want 3822 all the time, other things. Feel like no people are looking for me. I mean, yeah, just real, real quick, um, that drop down, that's nine reasons. Uh, it's not. A lot of these are like separation reasons. It's for like chapter evaluations. Yeah. Yeah. Which, as a part of like somebody's administrative separation for certain like chapter, like for chapter now for a certain reason, they require a call. Like, that's usually what's the point. Uh, and I mean, over where I was stationed in Kent, we primarily saw uh, Marine, the Navy. We did have some army on the island, but not so much going through the ER. But we actually created a form, a form much more condensed than this one, but something like just wanted immediate notification on something that was written that, that we could check off and say, what are just the initial kind of recommendations after this evaluation? Uh, we also have an acute clinic where, again, we use this type of form, again, a more condensed version for those uh, more so not, uh, not army members, but something like this would be helpful for just kind of initial discussion because, like, uh, no longer, or uh, Lehman said, like, you're not going to put everyone that you need on that temporary profile. But the temporary profile does help capture some of the system long term. I will say too, right? So with these forms, like we're putting a diagnosis on there, we're putting like prognosis information, we're putting a lot of additional information. So specifically for something like a security clearance recommendation, right? That's going to a security manager. And so they technically are not entitled to having all of that information. Like all this information is only supposed to go to the managers. And so in that situation, like what I do is I write about it usually and like give the recommendation that like I recommend, you know, suspension of this number security clearance, you know, for later on this end, because security providers don't. Don't need to know that information and technically they are not supposed to that information. Um, so that's the other thing is like making sure you're protecting your patient, um, your patient's information from people that don't have the need to know, right? Because as part of that instruction, right, you are only supposed to be telling this information to the commanders or a specific designee, not to everybody. And so that's why I like the profile because that's going to the commander and going to the unit commander and they automatically get the information, right? I always call them and tell them what's coming and then we're doing that. Um, and if I send this form to them, I send it to them only. But sometimes, like, I've seen commands like file this stuff in some of these, like, records, like, in a folder that a bunch of people have access to. And so that's the other thing that you need to think about and be concerned about is that then your are like, for today, depending on what you put on this form, right? Some other people may have access to it, shouldn't have access to it. And then they know way too much about you know, their, 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 you know, soldier. So actually, to that point, um, the same regulation that caught on the nine reasons to use this form. Also, I have a note for commanders in there that when they appoint the commander, that's what's done right. Around the time when somebody comes to send them to pick up a service member, we're going to hand them this form. Exactly the time they shouldn't be with them. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to say. Um, in detail, very specifically, how you use the NBA standards. The options in the AR 3 6 are 3822, profile, email, or a phone call. Any form of those are completely acceptable. But the best way to complete the document is to take a profile. Since you're talking about the NBA standards, it it's at the top of the MSU. Yeah, four
that training in order to do these profiles, meaning and the training or certificates to fill out that very easy. Just the result training. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so before we head over to the navy side of things, I'll give the audience an option. Um, five or ten minutes for you? Five. Five? Okay. Here you go. Five. Well, we'll set time for five minutes and then that will be the Forty nine minutes. <laughs> Simran. Good. How about you? To all the different people. We're all going to learn what these forms are. So, but you can do it to develop that reputation, especially in the arts. You know, the reputation, but my official reputation is pretty possible. It's going to be Thank you. 